The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. You can't defeat her. She's too powerful. Clash with Kenzie. <laughs> Let the battle begin. Q101. And here we go for Glass Animals Tickets. Beat Kenzie in trivia. And you are going and it will be Jay checking in from Schaumburg. Jay, ahoy, tell us something really quick about yourself. Well, I told Case right away that I was left-handed because I couldn't think of anything else. But I will say that I play a right-handed guitar upside down. Oh, that's huh. what Jimi Hendrix did, right? Yeah, that's what Kurt Cobain did, too. Uh, well, he restrung. He restrung. There are other guys that I'll actually play with the What a cop-out. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> Jimmy, wait, wait. what a joke, Jimmy. Yeah. Hey, I, I, I couldn't play. Take all his credentials away. Yeah. Wait, so you play the right-handed guitar left-handed, but then the strings are upside down? Upside down, so I play a low E on the bottom. So how do you play chords and stuff? <laughs> Easy. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm stuck on that, Brian? I'm just saying I play guitar. I think that'd be fascinating to watch. I want to watch you play sometime. Deal. I'll come over the house later. <laughs> you guys have a play date. <laughs> a play date? Megan, can I go over Jay's house in Schaumburg? What are you going to do? We're going to play guitar? <laughs> He's better than Hendrix. <laughs> <laughs> He's better than Hendrix. <laughs> Uh, all right, here we go. For the Glass Animals tickets, first one to five wins. Remember, uh, Jay, that if Kenzie gets one wrong, you can steal a point. She can do the same to you. Call heads or tails right now. One, two, three, call it. Ad. Ah, it's tails. Hendrix was, a, Hendrix, Hendrix was a better coin tosser. That's right, yeah. he was. That's yeah, what I heard about him. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Kenzie, question number one. By what name is sodium chloride better known as? Salt. Salt is right. Also, but a big issue would me losing the baby weight. Salt is? Oh, yeah. Why is that? You're eating too much salt? I like it. I, I love salt. <laughs> you got like a salt block in your house? I'm like a big fan. If it was socially acceptable to have a salt lick in the house, I would have one. I, I can get you one from the tractor supply store. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the deer, like deer love those, right? Like deer love salt licks? Yeah, of course. And you're kind of built like a deer. <laughs> is it actually just a well, salt lick? It's actually just a black of salt? Is that really just what it is? Yeah, you know what? I tried to lick one once. <laughs> Where? In the woods? <laughs> I was on a farm. He got I... caught in a deer trap. <laughs> That's what I imagined. He got sniped. No, they're, they're like there sometimes on, like on a farm just for the deer to come up and lick them. Where, where are you on a farm? Up in, there's that Glenview farm up there. Okay. You ever seen that yeah, off Lake yeah. Avenue? It's not, I mean, it's right, like now a, they're going to put up a sign that says, please don't lick this. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to say, I was disappointed. It doesn't taste like table salt. That's too bad. I know. What kind of salt does it taste like? I mean, it tasted like concrete. Like I, was, I, couldn't, I couldn't get the salt off of it. Like deer must have great tongues because they must get that salt off that lick. I guess you should have spent more time sucking on the salt. You gotta practice my tongue work. Yeah. Poor Megan. You can't even get the salt off a block. Yeah, she definitely has a deprived life. Oh, so Kenzie's got one. Hey, hey, got <laughs> this is gonna take a long game here. Uh, uh, you're talking about sucking the salt off a block. He's uh, back to Jay. Uh, Jay, Joe Rogan hosted yep. what reality show from 2001 to 2006? Fear Factor? Fear Factor's right. What a show that was. I got to turn it off on the eating stuff. I could not watch. It was, ugh. Not enough salt. Not enough, <laughs> not enough salt. Yeah, those Bulls balls were always, like, super saltless. I remember they, that's what they were complaining about. Oh, my God. <laughs> I just choked on a Bulls ball for a second. That's what I heard. Buffalo, salt, saltless and disgusting. Buffalo sauce makes the bowl balls go right down. That's what I heard. Yeah, little French <laughs> red hot on those bowls balls. Oh, one no. to one, back to Kenzie. Wow, Kenzie. Uh, yeah. Ol Olive Garden's signature salad dressing is what kind of dressing? Italian. Uh, of course it is. Uh, let's see, Jay. Uh, what is Ace Ventura's occupation in the movie by the same name? Pet Detective. Pet Detective is right. He was. Yeah, what'd you think he was? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So I haven't seen that movie in a really long time, but I I thought that I okay, go I thought he was like a lawyer. I remember a court scene. <laughs> He's a detective and detectives go to court sometimes. Maybe that's what it was. I, I honestly <laughs> thought he was like a lawyer, and I know that sounds crazy, but he's a pet detective. That's liar liar. Oh! So he was a lawyer. Yep. 
<laughs> Thank you, Jay. Also, Jay for three points. <laughs> also, love the scene in Liar Liar when he goes in the elevator with the woman. I don't. I haven't seen it. I don't know. Oh, I forgot you haven't seen anything. Kenzie, you seen Liar Liar, Kenzie? Yeah. yeah. Also, a long time ago. Yeah. My what's most the, what's recent the scene in the elevator? Car- yeah. What happened? She's well endowed. Oh, oh, yeah. And you no, no, love no. that scene? Because he has, to, well, you don't know the movie, so it doesn't make sense if I explain it to you. You know him. He just loves Oscar winning <laughs> yeah. scenes. You just think I'm being a pig. <laughs> I do. You are being a pig. But I'm not. It's the movie. You literally lick salt blocks on farms. <laughs> You're a pig. <laughs> but I'm not a pig in that reference. <laughs> it's two to two. It's back to Kenzie. Kenzie, uh, apple brown Betty is a dessert composed of apples and what? A- apple brown Betty. Three. I don't know, brown sugar? Brown sugar's right. Okay. Wow. You ever had one? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, That blew your mind, didn't it, Jay? Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Three to two. Back to Jay. That's right. Jay, what building is located at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue? The White House. The White House. Oh, it just casually just says that. Oh, my God. That wasn't my question. Mm. <laughs> oh, damn. I should have said that. Uh-uh. Were you going to say Jimmy John's is there? <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I got the Olive Garden. <laughs> uh, we'll take this one, Kenzie, then. Uh, your brother's a mechanic. What car part is meant to prevent the engine from overheating? Coolant? Uh, no, no. Uh, Jay, do you know? That is meant for that. No, but the, I said car part. What's part of the car? Radiator. <laughs> Jay said radiator. He's right. You pour the coolant into the radiator. Well, it's still in the car. But it's not a part. It's liquid. <laughs> It's kind of like how Subway is in a restaurant. Oh, <laughs> All right. Well, it's four to three, and it's back to Jay. He could win Glass Animals tickets with the correct answer. Wow. Uh, Jay, you're going to need a bigger boat. Originated from what movie? Jaws. Jaws is right. <laughs> Congratulations, Jay. Woo! Thank you, my friends. Thank you, my friends. Hey, you got tickets to go see Glass Animals Wednesday, August 28th. Tickets are on sale now. These are free and first from Live Nation, as Case reported this morning. They've added a second show on that because of the popularity of glass animals in Northerly Island. But you're going free. Congrats, bud. Thank you. Thank you. Clash with Kenzie. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Now, if you missed the word earlier, everybody else, for the Black Keys at the Madhouse, we will give you that word again after the Lemonheads. Chance to get free tickets for the Black Keys at the United Center. Just about three minutes away, Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Brian and Kenzie in the morning. And Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. And you have you know, a good 25 minutes left to text in the word beautiful for Ticket Puts Thursday. That is for the Black Keys tickets at the Madhouse. So Ticket Puts Thursday, Black Keys, beautiful. Text that right now to 312-591-8300 if you haven't. And now we'll get your chance to get into the party with Brian and Kenzie and Q101. Uh, Something weird Case showed me, uh, something that was trending with the box set of the movie Showgirls, which had Jessie from Saved by the Bell in it, and she's naked in like half the movie. Haven't seen it, I don't know, but I've heard it mentioned a time or two. Elizabeth Berkley, is that her name? That's her name. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see that? Great movie. Did you think it was great? I loved that movie. I'm glad we agree on that. You're, you shouldn't like it. <laughs> Why shouldn't I like it? You shouldn't be into it. That's like, it should be, it's like a chick flick thing and you're just a pervert. It's a chick flick thing and I'm a pervert. Yeah, it's like you shouldn't, it's like, it's like a guy walking around Victoria's Secret. Like, you should be here. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. Sorry, that, sorry they put a bunch of naked people in a movie and a guy liked it. Sorry. I'm sorry for being a guy. Sorry. Also. Just go to Pornhub. Well, Leave us alone. I didn't say I don't do that. I'm I just know. saying that Showgirls was there for me at the time and Pornhub wasn't. Because that movie's like 30 years old? I think old? 95. I think 29 years old this year. Wow. Time flies when Showgirls is almost 30 years old. You know? <laughs> Case is doing reviewing movies. We'll talk about it in a minute of the classics. I don't know if I... Should we show- make them watch Showgirls? <laughs> <laughs> Please make me watch Showgirls. Please have that be the movie review for tomorrow. But you have seen all of Saved by the Bell. Like, you understand that show, right? No, I've never seen an episode of Saved by the Bell. I know oh. of it, but I've never seen an episode of it. I think that it makes the movie way different if you've seen Saved by the Bell. Why? Because you know what's weird is that she, I didn't think she was like a vixen in Saved by the Bell at all. Like, Correct. You know? And then it was like, what the hell is this? Well, wasn't she a child in Saved by the Bell? Uh, she was probably a teen. 
Yeah. Well, no, she, she was playing a teen. I don't know if she was a teen. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen Grease? They got like 40 year olds in high school. Yeah. Kinsey's watching this teen show going, God, these they're not vixens. I don't know what it is. They're just not. Well, I mean, I looked like a hoe when I was in high school, so. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm yeah. like, this isn't realistic. Yeah. I don't know if anybody was call- saying, like, here comes that vixen Kenzie, <laughs> yeah. just like a hoe. Oh, did she get back from Wet Seal? <laughs> oh, I love Wet Seal. When I was young. That was the move. I don't know if I'm going down a wrong wormhole to see how old she was in Saved by the Bell. Oh, I don't know if I would do that. Well, she's 50 now, um, Elizabeth Berkeley. so Saved by the Bell. <laughs> <laughs> what were the years of Saved by the Bell? I don't know. Look it up. Why, why, I, weren't you, I, why didn't you come prepared? Well, no, because I didn't know you were going to take me there. And now I don't know if I want the answer, is what I'm saying. Should I look it up? How old? This is like firing a bullet into a trampoline. You're just waiting for trouble. I, exactly. <laughs> like, so not everything needs to be known. Can we just live? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a criminal. <laughs> that sounds like an R. Kelly excuse. <laughs> also, by the way, I ended up on Elizabeth Banks' page, not Elizabeth Berkeley's. I just ended up on Elizabeth Hurley. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> See, it shows how far down the list that Elizabeth So she Berkeley... was born in 1974. So, yeah, she she's... was 15 when it premiered. Not good, Brian. Well, you said it. I didn't say You yeah, said you famous. brought up Vixens. I didn't say nothing. I said she wasn't one. What's but, wrong with that? But you were assuming she could be one. No, I was like, she wasn't one, and then this movie came out, and I wasn't mentally prepared. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> I'm used to you being in sweaters. Yeah. <laughs> she was a good girl on the show. Mm-hmm. She was a good girl. That's what I mean. Yeah, she was so not was, a vixen. She was kind of, like, nerdy almost, so it's like, whoa, okay. Different so, role. Case, what happens in the movie is, well, some, well, some really bad things, and also her profession is not... Related to Saved by the Bell at all. Her, 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 non, her non-vixen this and Saved by the Bell. Spin-off? You know, see, we were going to do Ghostbusters for tomorrow for Case because Dan Aykroyd's in town mm-hmm. promoting the Ghostbusters, uh, the, Ver- the Wonderverse thing at Schaumburg at Winfield yeah. Mall, and then also the movie out. But now I'm wondering if we should just change the Showgirls. I'd so much rather watch Showgirls. I haven't seen Ghostbusters or Showgirls. Maybe the text line should decide what movie I should watch tomorrow. 312 591 Do that, please. You guys decide. It's your show. Anyway, we were talking about Showgirls because the packaging on it was really weird. It was trending where it's her leg, everything else is kind of blacked out. So it looks like it's a long worm with her head on the top. <laughs> it's not good. It's not sexy. Mm-mm. Just like her and Saved by the Bell. Not sexy. <laughs> and people saying they were, they were afraid of it when they saw it when they were young because they thought it was a worm with a head on it. Because the packaging looked really weird. It's very odd. It is. Because uh, she's got, she's basically naked under there, mm-hmm. and then it, it's a long. Under what? It's a picture. What do you mean she's naked under there? Because she's wearing like a robe that's kind of exposing her leg and then her torso and then her head. So by the way, under everyone's clothes, they're naked, Brian. I but, hate when people say that. Oh, there's nothing going. There's nothing under there. Oh, no, no, no crap. <laughs> but she, hers is open. She's got an open robe. My my, clo- my clothes are. I don't know are... if that's a robe. I think it's just blacked out. My clothes are closed right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> it's all closed Please up. keep it that way. You got a button. I got a zipper. And I got a belt. It's all closed up. Are you gonna start doing this show in like the Weinstein robe, where oh. just throughout the show it just yeah. opens up more and more? <laughs> no underwear. It's just can like... we vote? Can we take a vote and make sure it doesn't happen? Can you just ask your coworkers how they feel. No, the vote is for Showgirls or Ghostbusters tomorrow. What Case should review. Oh, okay. that... He hasn't seen either. We'll do that vote but um uh, that's been trending like this packaging that some the guy who was afraid of it that put that around and it kind of got around the, around the wonderful internet there well you know what's weird is that like when you're young like weird things scare you and stick with you like this right so that guy remembers it right and for me i had night terrors when i was a kid like horrible 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 night terrors and i had a reoccurring one and it's all because you know when you leave the movie theater and it's like it's, but the movie theater is now closed because you went to a late movie and it's kind of creepy. Mm-hmm. You know, like everything's closed down and it's dark. So I was a little kid. I was leaving the movie theater with my family, and you know the arcade. There's always like a mini arcade section in a movie theater, right? Yeah, it was always. It was. It was kind of sad because it wasn't a full arcade, but there was like one or two machines over there. Yeah, it's a few machines. So we're walking past the arcade and I just look over. The whole place is dark and all eerie, and there was a game. I don't remember this called Carn Evil. Do you remember that game? I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, like, the whole game, you know, those fake guns, you're trying to kill all these zombies and stuff, but the promo was running on the screen, okay? And mm-hmm. I was just staring at it. I was staring at this guy trying to not die at a carnival, okay? And I'm like, oh, my God. 
And it became my reoccurring nightmare for four or five years where I would fall asleep and I would enter a different attraction at Carnival and I would die there too. It was Jeez. horrible. And I was like, five. Isn't that horrible? It's not good. Hey, you lived a tough life. I mean, oh my God. I didn't even play the game. I know. <laughs> You're afraid of the trailer of the game. That's horrible. That's really the thing. It was a long trailer. Wow. So you woke up, did you wake up screaming a word? Oh my God. My parents, like, like I would like scream in my sleep. Mm. So I'd be screaming bloody murder. They'd run into my room, and I'm asleep, still screaming. It was horrible. Did you, ex- them too. did you explain what was scaring you in the dream? Yes. Then? I'm like, I'm stuck at a carnival every night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Get me out of here. <laughs> yeah. But listen, what's, what inappropriately or for no reason scared you as a kid? Check in with us at 312-591-8300. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. The Brian and Kenzie Show on Q101. About 10 minutes left for you to text in beautiful to 312 591 8300 for your chance at Black Keys tickets. Now at 9, we'll have another word as Ticket Buds Thursday continues. But beautiful is good for 10 more minutes till 859. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Text that to 312 591 8300. We're talking about things that scared you as a kid that, you know, maybe they weren't scary. As someone was afraid of the showgirls. DVD box set packaging because it looked like a long worm as her leg was exposed. If you've ever seen that, you can go Google it. You can see it for yourself. And then <laughs> oh her heads God. and then her heads at the end of it. It's weird. I actually had a special edition Showgirls DVD box set. Put, I'm going to put you on a list. And I had this. I kept, I held on to this for like 15 years. I thought it might be worth something because it had these champagne glasses in it. <laughs> well, yeah, you can't get champagne glasses anywhere else. <laughs> but they were they were monogrammed showgirls, like special edition. The DVD was special edition. There was like, I think there was something else in the box too. Oh, I'm sure there was. I never opened it because I want to keep the packaging pure. Yeah, no, it's like a GI Joe, it's like an original GI Joe. Want to keep, keep the, the package. stick off of it? That's right. So Gross. I eventually found out that it wasn't worth like more than twenty dollars, uh-huh. even fifteen years later. So I I just gave it to somebody. That's too bad. Wow! Well, a... Imagine getting a monogrammed showgirls <laughs> champagne glass from Brian. What an honor that would be. That was a great Christmas for them. I'm sure it was. As they <laughs> oh no! Family. <laughs> Other people checked in about things they they were scared about, and this is interesting because Jessica says, I, for absolutely no reason at all, I'm definitely afraid of Oompa Loompas. Don't, don't say no reason. They're terrifying. Awful, awful creatures. They're weird. Um, have you seen Charlie the Chocolate Factory or or Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory case? No, I've seen the uh, Family Guy episode about it. Oh <laughs> god. <laughs> so you have he's gonna have to watch both. But I don't I don't like that concept. That's never been a movie. That's a, even the new Timothy Timothy Chalamet one. And I like Chalamet, but I don't I don't have any interest in those. They see it's creepy. In a it's chocolate like a, factory? Yeah, an old man lures kids into a warehouse. I don't want to see that. He doesn't. He doesn't do that. <laughs> Is that not the concept of the movie? He's nope. a very, very nice man. Is he really? Yeah. Well. You know who I hate in that movie? Who? <laughs> <laughs> the grandpa. What if he's a crab? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? His ass has been laying in that bed and he can't move. And then all of a sudden, Charlie gets a ticket and he can magically tap dance across the room <laughs> while the parents are working and trying to feed him. Oh, and he gets a day off. He hasn't moved his ass in years. And it's like, oh, he gets the fun day, not the dad who's been trying to find work every day is on his feet or the mom is cooking for them. That's a good take on that one. Grandpa Joe. Worst guy ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, updated news. Case will probably be watching Ghostbusters instead of Showgirls for the movie tomorrow that he hasn't seen. These the classics. Again, Showgirl's not necessarily a classic, but he'll see it at some point. We got to get to the big ones first, like Ghostbusters. That's right. So I'm going to watch Ghostbusters tonight. I'll have that review at 8.50 here tomorrow morning. And uh, coming up here after the Killers, so we do these 20th anniversary things because it's just crazy to think that some things are just 20 years old. You're not going to believe what this one is. It's something you had to watch on TV in real time, couldn't record it, at least not the way you do it today. And I don't know how to tease it any better than that right now. But I think comedy changed forever after this. That's a good way to put it. Comedy changed forever after this. 20 years ago, we'll play the audio of it after the Killers. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. The Brian and Kenzie Show on Q101.